Very exciting. It's the rubber band from our car. This tutorial is to take you through one more uh, way that we're going to characterize our prototype car and be able to compare it to our re-engineered car. So we've talked a lot about uh, kinematics, which is acceleration and velocity, but we want to talk a little bit about the energy that gets transferred in the car. So this is the rubber band that we're going to be using and we want to be able to kind of characterize what happens when we stretch it. So the underlying concept is something that I'm sure you have talked before in uh, different classes and this is this idea that energy is transferred. So um, very basic, so if I have a ball that I lift up to a certain height, so here's my ball right here, it's going to have what we call potential energy and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have already studied potential energy. So if I let the ball go it's going to drop down to the ground and just before it hits the ground all of that potential energy gets transferred into what is called kinetic energy. This is energy due to motion and this potential energy is energy held in readiness, ready to do something else, ready to be transferred into kinetic energy. We're going to use the same idea with the rubber band. So instead of this potential energy, which more specifically is called gravitational potential energy, these rubber bands have what we call elastic potential energy. So as I stretch and stretch them, it's like lifting the ball up higher and higher. And when I let it go, it's going to snap back and transfer that energy. In fact, if I take my, this is another kind of rubber band, big green one. If I take my $100 eraser that I have, okay. So right now, my rubber band is not stretched at all. And if I let this go, well, it's just not going to do anything. But if I want to transfer energy here, I can stretch the rubber band back, 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 and if I let it go, ah, I'm going to transfer all of the elastic potential energy that was in my stretched rubber band into my $100 eraser. So the idea is we want to be able to characterize our car rubber band because if we look at I have a bunch of different rubber bands here I have this big green one and then I kind of have the tire rubber band and then I have elastic that I put in my hair all of these have different amounts of energy depend on how much I stretch them so if I stretch this one a little bit it's got a certain amount of uh, energy but if I stretch this one the same amount well it's kind of tougher to stretch and it actually ends up that it has more energy so we need to characterize the stretchiness of our rubber bands and that's the experiment that we're going to do with the Force and Energy Lab. All right, so here's the goal. We want to determine the energy stored in the stretch rubber band. So as I mentioned before, all these different rubber bands are, have different characteristics to them. So we need to figure out how stretchy the rubber band is. So we um, call this, in physics, we don't call it the stretchiness. We give it a, a more fancy name. It's called K. And this is called the spring constant. But all it is, is a characteristic of, of how stretchy is the rubber band. And in order to figure that out, we're going to apply forces. We're going to pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, and see how much force we have to apply in order to stretch at a certain distance. And that experiment will be described in the next video. Um, this video is just going to tell you how to calculate the energy. So the energy stored, which is potential energy, in the rubber band, write it all out, is going to be equal to one half times this spring constant times x squared, and this is the amount that we stretch it. Now this is the key factor. Remember when I we were going over the lab and I said it's very important in your procedure to write down how much did you wind up the rubber band? How much did you stretch it? Some people stretched it half a meter, some people stretched a little bit less, some people stretched a little bit more. This number is key. You need to have this number for your prototype as well as your new re-engineered car. Now your re-engineered car doesn't have to have the same amount of stretch as the prototype. In fact, you might want to think about increasing it a little bit because the more stretch you have, the more energy you're going to get stored. Okay, so the next video is the describes the experiment of how to figure out what the spring constant is. Good luck!